Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the Coriolis effect. Now, the Coriolis effect is an effect whereby a mass moving in a rotating system experiences a force, which is the Coriolis force, which acts perpendicular to the direction of the motion and to the axis of rotation. On Earth, the effect tends to deflect moving objects to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere, and it is also important in the formation of cyclonic weather systems. Now, I'm sure this definition sounds a bit tricky, and the phenomenon of Coriolis effect is a bit confusing. Now, that is the reason why you're watching this video, right? Now, you're here to get answers to some questions, such as what is the Coriolis effect and how does this phenomenon occur? And this is exactly what we'll discuss in this video. All right, let's begin. Now, before we discuss the Coriolis effect and the direction and deflection of winds on our planet, there are some facts that you must know. First of all, the Earth rotates on its own axis, and this rotation is from west to east. So basically, this is the direction of the Earth's rotation. Now, one thing that you must remember is that this rotation is not from left to right. Because left and right depends on your own perspective. If two people are facing each other, their left and right would not be the same. Hence, we say that the Earth rotates from west to east. The Earth takes 24 hours for one complete rotation. Now we come to Coriolis force. What exactly is the Coriolis force? It is the force experienced due to the rotation of the Earth on its own axis and this force is experienced by living and non-living organisms on the planet, on the surface of the planet and also by air mass, clouds etc. in the atmosphere. Now since the Earth is rotating from west to east, the Coriolis force would also be in this direction, from west to east. So this would be your Coriolis force. Now this Coriolis force is very small as compared to the other forces of daily occurrence and can only be noticed for large displacements of large bodies, example clouds, air masses, water in the ocean, etc. One more thing that you must know is that the Coriolis force on the equator is zero and on the poles is maximum. Now what does this mean? Now this means that if this is the equator, Although this is not the equator because we can see India here. But let us assume that this is the equator. Now a person who is standing on the equator would not twist 360 degrees and would remain stationary. So the same person can be seen here after some rotation of the earth. And he has traveled from this distance to this distance without twisting. On the other hand, if the same person is standing here on the poles, Let's say this person is standing on the south pole. Now this person would twist 360 degrees because of the rotation of the earth on its own axis and the poles would spin the fastest. Now one more thing that the velocity of rotation on the equators is maximum whereas this velocity on the poles is minimum. Now don't confuse yourself by thinking that this velocity is same as the Coriolis force. No, it is not. So basically the velocity here would be maximum and here it would be minimum. The reason is that for the same time duration, let's say 24 hours, a person standing on the equator will have to travel a longer distance as compared to the poles. As we know, velocity is distance upon time. So if the time is constant and the distance is higher at the equator for one complete rotation, the velocity would be higher at the equator. Now again, if time is constant and distance covered is zero at the poles, the velocity would also be zero. Right, so now we'll try and understand the pattern of deflection of winds on the earth. Now in the definition, we saw that the winds deflect to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. What exactly does this mean? Let us take an example of a merry-go-round. Now let's assume this is a merry-go-round, which you can find in playgrounds for children. And let us assume this merry-go-round is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. Now this is a child at the edge of the merry-go-round. This is a ball and this is the center of the merry-go-round. Now since the merry-go-round is rotating anti-clockwise, the force that would be experienced by the child would be in this direction. This would be a tangential force and hence this would be the tangential velocity component of this child. Right, so let us assume this child throws a ball towards the center of the merry-go-round. So the intended direction of the ball would be this. So the velocity given to the ball would be towards the center of the merry-go-round in this direction. But since the merry-go-round is also rotating anti-clockwise, 
there would be a tangential velocity component in this direction which would be perpendicular to the velocity given by the child to the ball towards the center of the merry go round now since there are two directions of velocities the ball cannot move in both it will take the mean of both the velocity components and the direction would be somewhat like this now let us assume there was another child sitting here who was supposed to stop the ball now the boy on the boundary of the merry go round will have to travel a larger distance to cover one complete rotation on the merry go round as compared to the boy who is there inwards hence the velocity of this boy would be higher than the one who is inside which means that when the ball is thrown towards the center of the merry go round the tangential component of the ball would be higher as compared to the tangential component of the boy inside the merry go round which would mean that the ball would travel at a higher velocity as compared to this boy inside the merry go round now notice that the center and the two boys are on the same axis which means that they'll continue to maintain their axis even when the merry go round is rotating now after some time the boy on the periphery would have reached somewhere here and the boy who was inside the merry go round would have reached on the same axis somewhere here now this is really important the ball would have overshoot this boy because it had a higher tangential velocity as compared to the boy inside the merry go round so the ball would be somewhere here although it appears as if the ball traveled in a straight line but this boy thinks otherwise because he intended to throw the ball towards the center of the merry go round but it has instead gone in this direction which means that it deflected towards the right of this boy now this is really important we are talking about perspection here and the role of the observer is the most important because he is the one who is developing this perspection and based on that we are deriving an analysis so in this case this boy is the observer and he is looking towards the center of the merry go round and he feels as if the ball has shifted towards the right and has not reached the intended target which is this boy now this deflection is because of this component and this component is because of the velocity which was generated due to the rotation of the merry go round now what would have happened if this boy would have tried to throw this yellow ball towards this boy the intended direction would have been this but there would have been a tangential velocity due to the rotation of the merry go round which is again counter clockwise now again the final direction would have been something like this now after some time let's say the boy which was on the periphery of the merry go round had reached here and the other boy on the same axis had reached here and the ball which had a lower tangential velocity as compared to the boy on the periphery could not overshoot the boy and had reached here now again who is the observer this boy is again the observer and we'll take the perspective of this boy only now the observer thinks that the boy who was inside the merry go round had started throwing the ball towards this boy and it eventually took this path although the ball went to the left of this boy but from the perspective of the observer the ball actually deflected towards the right of the boy inside the merry go round this is what this observer thinks hence although the ball went towards the left of this boy as you can see from your perspective as an observer watching the screen but for this boy who is watching towards the center of the merry go round believes that the ball has shifted towards the right of the boy inside the merry go round so eventually this boy believes that in both the cases in an anti clockwise rotation of the merry go round the ball shifted towards the right now let us apply this example to planet earth this boy the observer would be sitting on the equator this would be the pole the center of the merry go round and the ball would actually be the wind now as we were having a top view of the merry go round in the previous example in this example we'll be having a top view of the earth which would mean that we are looking from here and this top view would show us the north pole at the center and the equator on the periphery of the planet earth so this is the same boy who is on the equator looking towards the north pole now as we saw when the ball was moving towards the center which in this case the wind would move towards the pole it would deflect towards the right and the wind which was moving towards the equator from the poles would also deviate towards the right now again this is from the perspective of the observer sitting at the equator 
so if you observe from this point you would believe that the winds that were coming towards the equator which was this case they deflected towards the right of their source just as we saw here and the winds which were going away from the equator deflected towards the right of their source which we can see here now this is the case for northern hemisphere because this deflection towards the right is valid when the rotation is counter clockwise as i just told you the direction of earth's rotation is from west to east and if you look from the top this west to east rotation would look counter clockwise whereas if you look from the bottom this west to east rotation would look clockwise now this is really important this is where most of the students commit mistakes now please make sure if there is anything that you can't understand or if there are doubts please write it down in the comment section and we'll try and solve them for you now in the northern hemisphere the winds that are coming from the subtropical belt towards the equator are known as the northeasterly trade winds whereas the winds in the temperate region going from the subtropical belt towards the poles are the westerlies similarly in the southern hemisphere the temperate region has westerlies whereas there are the southeasterly trade winds in the subtropical zone now that we've understood that the wind deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere now why does it deflect towards the left in the southern hemisphere let us have a closer look now let us get back to the same example of the merry go round and this time it would rotate in the clockwise direction which would mean that the tangential velocity of this boy would be in this direction due to the rotation of the merry go round now once again the boy inside the merry go round is here and the intended path of the ball is towards this boy and due to the tangential component the final path would be something like this now again after some time this boy would have reached here and the other boy on the same axis would have reached here now again the ball would have overshoot this boy because of the higher tangential velocity component due to the rotation of the merry go round so let's say the ball would have reached somewhere here now again who's the observer this is the observer this boy is the observer and he would believe that instead of going in a straight line the ball deviated it deflected towards the left of its own path starting from the source again in the next example when the same boy inside the merry go round would try to throw the ball out towards the periphery in this direction due to the clockwise rotation of the merry go round there would be a tangential velocity component in this direction and eventually the final component would be something like this now again after some time this boy would have reached here and on the same axis this boy would have reached somewhere here and as the ball had a lower velocity component the tangential velocity component as compared to this boy it could not have overshoot this boy and it reached somewhere here which would mean that again this is the observer and according to his perception he would believe that the ball starting from this boy and instead of moving in a straight line it went towards the left it deviated it deflected towards the left from its line of path starting from its source so in both the cases the ball deviated towards the left now applying this example to planet earth where the ball would be the wind and the observer would be standing at the equator and if this is the south pole and if we look at the bottom view it would appear as if the earth is rotating clockwise which would mean that the observer on the equator would believe that the winds moving towards the pole deflect towards the left of their line of path and the winds coming towards the equator also deflect towards the left of their line of path starting from their source this is exactly what you notice here the southeasterly trade winds they deflect towards the left and they appear as if they are coming from the southeast direction whereas the westerlies they also deflect towards the left in the temperate region I hope now you've understood the concept of Coriolis effect and the entire phenomenon would be clear in your head. See all topics are very easy. We ourselves make them very difficult for us to understand. So keep struggling, keep learning and don't give up. And if you have any doubts, ask us in the comment section and we'll be happy to help. Meanwhile, you can download the Civil Course if I Android app from the Google Play Store and you can ask your doubts there also and I'll get loads of contents and videos and topics and courses where you can learn and understand the concepts in a better way. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel show us your love like the video share the video and help us continue making such videos for you thank you so this is it for this video the pdf notes for this video are available on the civil course if i android app for free subscribe to our youtube channel download the civil course if i android app and follow us on facebook and telegram 
Links are available in the description as well as comment section. Till then, thank you and take care.